go from here, I guess, is the question. And again, this is just a short intro, and we'll talk about it more after. Um, okay. Um, three ideas here, augmented reality, wearable computing, or wear comp, and ubiquitous computing, UbiComp. Um, have people run into this idea of augmented reality? So you know what virtual reality is. Uh, Second Life is like a, uh, a poor version of virtual reality. Actually, my guess is that Second Life is pretty close to um, uh, what uh, Pepper would call the knowledge machine, this idea of being able to simulate anything at any time and be able to learn with them in that environment. And I'd be curious, forgetting about kind of college students, I'm curious how high schoolers are using this technology, but, or, or, or younger, um, whether people are going in and building stuff. But um, uh, augmented reality is this idea of taking virtual reality and adding it, layering it on top of um, your everyday experience. So in this example, none of this actually exists. It's only this, you know, it's a trick of, of uh, layered video, layered uh, pictures in this case. It's only visible to the people that have the goggles on. So it tracks where your head is and layers information on top of it. That could be very basic stuff like this, like this is the name of the shop, this is their uh, information. Someone uh, mentioned the idea of a remembrance agent that is, uh, you know, my little thing of faces but popping up whenever I see you so that I remember who you are. You know, I can pull up your blog in a little window next to your head. And it's like the Terminator. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and in fact, some people have played with this in really interesting ways. There's a guy named Steve Mann. Um, who I'm being filmed, so I won't say is a complete freak, but I'm sure he would agree, is uh, at least a, a somewhat of a freak, uh, in a good way. Hi, Steve. Um, and, uh, uh, and he does some really interesting stuff with this. He was one of the first real cyborgs. From the 1970s on, he's worn a wearable computer, and at this point, he has a wearable computer on 24-7. Uh, and one of the things he does, for example, is um, in one experiment, he has uh, all of the advertisements in his visual field blocked out. So it, he has image recognition that says, this looks like it's a sign or an advertisement, and it will block it out. So he can walk through an environment without seeing any ads. No billboards, no signboards, and he can put his own advertising on top of that if he wants. How long did he do it for? I don't know. Very, I mean, my guess, this is all prototype stuff, so my guess is it didn't work that well. Hi, Steve. And, uh, and, and you know, he showed us kind of what it looked like, but my guess is that he didn't choose to do that very long. Um, but there is this idea of kind of layering stuff over the real world, and that's at the most extreme end, I think. Um, it was hard to do this without drugs before. I mean, this idea of directly altering reality is a really interesting, directly manipulating reality is an interesting idea. So the, problems, the problem with Second Life is that it's really chunky. It doesn't look very real. But think about if you could add those objects from Second Life into your everyday existence. You know, have it be there in front of you while you're walking through your life. Be able to build those things in a, in a consensual environment so that other people can see the same things. And that adds some really interesting ideas for, for building community and for, for learning objects. Um, I don't know why this is in here. Oh, because we're talking about wearable computing. So this is one of, this is actually a fairly chunky um, wearable setup. At this point, Steve wears glasses that don't look that much different than mine. Um, uh, and, and I would love to have a pair, but um, they're something like $2,500 a pop. Um, and the computers, well, uh, some of your computers in here are light enough to actually carry around. Um, the one I'll, I'm using an old Vio for the, the project that I'm doing now, and it's you know less than four pounds um, and can record video for the day. Um, so the technologies have kind of stepped down to the point where we could think about a wearable computer. Um, and in fact, it's easier than carrying this thing around. If, if it was integrated in such a way that made sense, it's easier than doing that. The other way things are getting integrated is as embedded devices. This is the kind of prototypical, when we think about ubiquitous machines, everyone thinks about this, the, the, bra the, the browser in your, in your refrigerator. Anybody have this? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I talked about this for years and years, and then I went down to the local like PC Richards, and they're selling it, and so somebody's got it. Um, mostly, they don't do this; they use it for watching TV. Um, but you know, so the primary use, watching TV. Secondary use, checking your email while you're cooking. Um, and and frankly, why you would put that in a fridge, I don't know. I mean, 
it's an interesting cooling issue, but you know, I don't know why you would do that. Um, the step up for this is when it knows what's in the fridge. And that's a very short step ahead. Um, serves it seem like a Jetsons. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that it's just a pill. You don't, uh, yeah, so it will be nice if it served it too, but that's highly dependent on this stuff. This is the, you've seen these already because every once in a while you pick up a book and it still has it in it. Uh, the RFID, the, the you know, old technology, first generation RFID. Um, these are the things where if you try to leave the library with a library book, it complains at you. Um, and uh, these are dirt cheap. You buy them on a roll at this point. Um, this is the generation that's being used now. That's actually 12, that 12 is 12 point to give you an idea of size. Um, and this one, uh, I think, carries 1K of information, which is more than you'd actually need. Um, and this is it in somebody's hand, which is the current um, thing to do in New York. We go to parties, and uh, you find a, uh, a local vet who's willing to shoot you, and uh, they inject it into your hand. Why? Why? Yeah. Why? What's in it? Uh, Can I kill you? Well, no, it's not actually from, it's not the one that Earl Schwarzenegger actually uses. It doesn't actually do that. Um, it, it can infect. Um, um, so, right? Huh? Right, that's why you find a vet. Because yeah. literally, uh, uh, he'll lose his license. So, he, so they come and they introduce themselves as John, John the vet, because they can't come as themselves. It's a very, it's a very strange sort of meeting to go to. I haven't done it just because... I don't like people shooting things into me, strangely enough. <laughs> but uh, I have been there while people are kind of doing this. And, and there's probably a few dozen people who've done it. It's not a big thing, but it's getting very popular, yeah. Is it reprogrammable once it's in there? Yeah, because oh. yeah. it's still first generation stuff. It's basically a, the pet tag. It's, that's what they're using. They're using those RFIDs. Um, but you can key it to your front door. So you walk by your front door, open it, because it knows it's you. Same with the car. Everything knows it's you. And so, at any time, you are you no longer have to carry car keys. You no longer have to carry keys of any kind. You don't. Uh, your keyboard is you know the computer is easily keyed to that, so it's always passworded unless your hands are on the keyboard. Nobody else can get access to your computer without you know chopping off your hand. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, uh, how much are you worth at the grocery store? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, how much are you worth at the grocery store? That's right. Um, so there's there's security concerns and everything else, but it's interesting that that there's a company. I think did we talked about this before, Digital Angel, who ten years ago wanted to uh, chip kids and did a uh, applied to the FDA for an approval to do a, a trial run on this, and everyone said no, you can't possibly do that. It's evil. And after 9/11, they they did get approval to chip old people, um, uh, well Alzheimer's Alzheimer's folks. Um, so that they could, so if someone with Alzheimer's goes wild and often goes naked, because that's pretty common. Um, so they end up, and this is in Florida mostly, they end up picking up people without any clothes and any ID, and any idea who they are. Um, and this is usually middle of the night, and the families end up having to kind of, you know, find photos, go to the police station, and they try to compare photos. So they ended up chipping uh, a number of Alzheimer's patients so that when, if and when they did go for the same, you know, the same way they use it for dogs, they could do a Passover and they could ID them immediately. Um, and now they've extended that and some kids are getting chipped as well. Where do um, you normally put the chip? Is it in the hand 